Today's discussion of defining your wealth statement came up from a couple of other discussions that I have with women on their thinking, their, uh, you know, let me just say lack thinking, because I don't know, I just, I just don't know a better way to describe it, lack, not enough but it 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 actually encompasses so much more of us and what our money story is because we each have a money story and in fact i really like calling it a money story because it is just that it is a story that i told myself or that i saw in my parents or in other people that were around me. It was a belief that I had about my race or my, or my, or my gender um, that I took on as truth. And it can be, it's very different for even different family members. Every one of my family members, I have an older brother, an older sister, and a younger sister. And each one of us has a different money story. We all came from the same parents. We all had the same upbringing. We all lived in the same house, saw the same things, heard the same things, and we internalized them differently. That is a money story. And the only way to release that money story is to ask it some questions like is this still true where did this come from does this have to be true for me right now but if we don't pause and take a look at where these stories come from, we don't stand a chance of releasing them. There's so much around women, especially women and their money story. There's so much around us, you know, I was watching last night uh, on Amazon Prime, I was watching the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which is a great series. I've so enjoyed it. <clears throat> but the interesting thing, even right from the first season, the very first program, it was her constantly comparing herself to an ideal. The way she measured her ankle, her calves, her thighs, that was something that she saw and she took as her truth that that had to be her, that she wasn't whole unless she met specific size ranges in this, in, in this instance. But that process, that her doing that creates that in every area of her life. So where in your, in, in like, like in your life, have you compared yourself to an ideal that is something that only exists if you allow it to?
we don't, no one is, was forcing Mrs. Maisel to measure her calf and her ankle and her thigh. She did that. So what are you doing? How can you take a look at your daily thoughts or how you go about life? How can you take a look at it and, and ask it questions of why, why am I, why am I even doing this this way? What's my thought process behind doing this? So in being here in the States, what's interesting is the um, a, abundance of stuff. Like there's the stores are full of stuff. They're full of like they're just so full. And it all looks so tempting. And it's all beautiful packaging. It's all placed exactly right. And thankfully, from my years of being in retail, I know exactly why that happens. Like I went to school actually for uh, retail merchandising. So I, the, uh, my, my specialty at the, in, in school was getting the consumer to walk from the front of the store to the back of the store. No different than a rock concert. A rock concert, the songs are placed so much so that the music brings you up, but it only brings you up, it only brings you so high because they don't want the crowd to get out of control, and then they'll start to play a, a slow song. And that's how they keep everybody's attention. So I'm just suggesting that you take a look at where your attention goes when you're looking at your money your pocketbook, how you feel about abundance, how you feel about having money, how you feel about keeping money. Because we can create that high for ourselves. We can and you and you can you you can you can look at it by your income too when your income fluctuates or your monthly spending fluctuates all of that roller coaster has an emotional component to it so <coughs> Excuse me, if you can stay focused on the high and who you are in that moment, who are you being right then when that client pays you, when your bank account is full? when your savings account has hit a certain number. Let that high be what guides you to make other decisions. Because that high is the high that's fueled by your growth, 
your personal growth fueled by you actually committing or living with intention about the life that you wish to lead. And I believe that, well, I know this to be true, that especially as women, we'll let ourselves down every every chance we get because no one's looking because I'm taking care of somebody else or I'm doing something for somebody else. So where is it that you can take a look at? I just read this the other day where and i thought that this was brilliant see see if see see how you think think about this <clears throat> try to disassociate your self worth from your net worth because so much of our self worth is linked to our money story that if you break those two apart and you look at how you deserve to be here, you deserve to take up space on the planet, you are here for a reason, you matter, And let that fuel your decisions as opposed to letting your thoughts about your net worth fuel how you feel about yourself. Because how you feel about yourself is going to guide whether you are being true to you and doing what you set out to living with intention, living your dream that you have or the, or the path that you have envisioned for yourself. So where can you disassociate yourself from your self-worth disassociate that from your net worth. Now, that doesn't mean that you're not going to pay attention to your net worth. It doesn't mean that you're not going to keep feeding that net worth. It means that the two are not linked together so that one can't move without the other. Because if you focus on your self-worth, your net worth will follow. There's a great quote that I always keep in my, by my desk. I actually have it with me in, in the notebook that I brought here. I, every time I get a new notebook, I pull out the, the quotes that I really like and I just jot them down randomly throughout the book, even a blank book. I'll just randomly put these quotes and for some reason, they just show up when they're supposed to. I don't know how that happens. I mean, I do know how it happens, but it still freaks me out every time it happens. And as I grabbed my my notebook the other day to start creating some ideas around that things that I wanted to share today, one of my favorite quotes is, is by Madonna. And she says, the one thing I've learned is that I'm not the owner of my talent. I'm the manager of it. And managers deserve to be paid 
They des- they deserve a seat at the table. They deserve to be heard. They deserve to make choice. So the one thing I've learned is that I'm not the owner of my talent. I'm the manager of it. And that, I don't know about you, but that is totally empowering to me. And I've said this before in a workshop that one of the things that was suggested to me when I opened up my first business was to, even, even if I'm a solopreneur, to create my imaginary board of directors so that whatever I was doing or whoever I was talking to, it was I was speaking to them on behalf of the board of directors. So if someone asked me to do something, it was either I've did this so many times, it was either I have to check with my my board, if you'll give me a few days, let me get back to you once I've checked with the board. Or I've said, you know, that's not a, that's not really a, um, a great financial decision for, uh, for the business, not for me, for my business. So that As women, because we nurture so much, we don't always take that full circle and nurture ourselves or look at receiving money as a way to nurture ourselves. Then if you add that third party in there, that's why I talk about creating your dream team so much. Because I, I, I often refer to them. What, what, what is, what, what is, what is the the whole story here? How can I bring this full circle so that this, whether I'm pricing out programs or coaching or Somebody somebody asked me to do something for them. Then I'm not looking at it from a net worth standpoint. I'm looking at it from my self worth standpoint. So the other. <laughs> Do you, do you guys follow um, Magnolia, uh, Ch- uh, uh, Joanne, and Chip uh, Gaines? Yeah, don't don't follow them now, but di- but watch them when they were free. <laughs> fix fix uppers. Yeah, I love those. Yeah, ones. love it. <laughs> Excuse me. In one of their Magnolia magazines, Chip had a quote that says this, people who hold fast to their non-negotiables erase the space between who they are and who they want to be. People who hold fast to their non-negotiables. So what are your non-negotiables? Where are your values, in other words? What do you value about your life? Erase the space between who they are and who they want to be. So where 
are the non-negotiables of your life. Where am I now? Disassociating myself from my net worth. Where am I now? What is one thing that I can do to keep me steadfast to my what what I want my net worth to be without it being without it becoming one self-worth and net worth need to remain separate how can I create my net worth on autopilot so how can I look at all that I do as a way to fuel or fund my self-worth. Still separate. So, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever that number is for you. And it has to be your number. There's so much, there's so much, there's so many lies out there. I can't, I, it just makes me sick. There's so many lies out there about how much money you need in order to retire or how much money you need to live. That, that's like saying that everybody is a size six. Yeah, yeah, agree. I mean, that simply is not true. And there's so much stress and so much feeling of lack that we put on ourselves because of an article that we read about how many, I read an article the other day that we had to, that in order to retire in America, you had to have $4.25 million in the bank. And I thought, who are you talking to? Like who, who, who is this? I'm retired and that's crap. Exactly. I can tell you, I've been retired how long have I been retired? Uh, I don't know. Seven years. That's that's baloney. It's it's that's just baloney. simply not true. However, it is true if your self worth and your net worth are one, because your lack that's that's your money story. That's my lack story. If my self worth. If I have described my self-worth, if I have described who I am and what I want my life to be and let that fund my net worth, that's a whole different story because my spending then never gets on autopilot. My spending gets looked at as, is this a want or a need? Do I need this because Joe has it? Or gee, I like the way those jeans look on you. Where did you get those jeans anyway? God, I gotta go get some of those. Those look great. I, I have enough pair of jeans already. Or when I was working at Bloomingdale's, in Costa Mesa, <laughs> women would come in with these pictures and magazines of <clears throat> Angelina Jolie had on a pair of Gucci sunglasses. 
in one of the Vogue magazines. And P- I, can- I-, I-, I mean, we lost track of how many women actually came in with this magazine page and said, I need to have these sunglasses. They were $1,200. They weren't prescription. They were $1,200 regular off the shelf glasses. And that, and I, 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 I got so incensed one day. This was when I knew it was time for me to get out of retail. I was so incensed one day that I told this woman that no pair of sunglasses was going to help her look like Angelina Jolie because she was not. And she needed to come to grips with that. And, and I had to leave the floor because I, I was not supposed to say that, obviously, as the as one of the um, executive team members, I that was something that I should not have said. So where where does where it watch just just watch where that where that where that thinking goes of is this where is that what is this tied to and what's the story? As I said earlier, my like my uh, Bridget, my younger sister's story, um, we're two years apart, mind you. What I saw was that uh, my, my father, my father said to me, as well as to my both of my sisters, he was he was a chiropractor, and he said, uh, <clears throat> "When you girls are are you know grown up, the, uh, you I'm." Um, you can only marry a chiropractor. So don't bother bringing anybody home that's not a chiropractor because that's, that's you know, we're gonna keep it in the family. That's what, that's what, he, that's what he told me, that's what, I, that's what I took. That's what I took. My mother never had a checkbook. She was given an allowance and that allowance was for groceries, dry cleaning, gas, whatever the kids needed for clothes. And if there was anything left over, which there wasn't, then she could buy herself a little something. Now we never wanted for anything, but, <coughs> excuse me, my money story was that the man is gonna provide for me. My sister Bridget's money story was I'll be goddamned if I'm going to let any man provide for me. <laughs> so that's 2 years apart. Right? What I saw and what she saw are two very different stories and we are in two very different financial places right now. Who's better off? Who's self-worth is better like what it what does what what do you want your life what do you want your life to to look like and feel like and be like because once we disassociate these two of the self-worth and the net worth you coming from a place of self-worth and describing that story instead of the story about how you how how you how you aren't because you don't have the 4.2 million dollars in your bank account that's my aren't story i i i am not that that's what i'm reading in and this was in Forbes magazine. There was another article in Inc. magazine. I mean, it's like AARP has them all the time. Although AARP, they were they said that you need they need uh, you needed 1.75 million in the bank. And I thought, you know, this I, I, it's it's it is simply it is simply it is simply not true. It's Listen. just simply not true, right, Terry? Oh yeah, yeah. There's like 50 so, ways to. <laughs> 50 ways to skin a cat on that. I mean, the, my approach is, is I own my house outright, so I don't have a mortgage payment. And I have, I have in the bank, I've probably got, I don't know, 20,000 <laughs> in, in Merrill Lynch. I've probably got, you know, 160,000, something like that. Um, but what I have that I live on are my pensions and my uh, social security and my, uh, you know, all that. And it's, 
it's not, it's not, it's half of what I was making when I was working, but it works it's, because I don't have a mortgage payment. I mean, that's one way to skin the cat. Right, 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 exactly. And what was your money story growing up? What, what did you see as... As true that, that, money. Well, I'm more like your sister, okay? Because I, what I saw is women at the mercy of men because they didn't earn their own money. I did not like that. Yes. And I, I, I was like your sister. I, I took secretarial classes in high school, and when I graduated from high school, I went to work and earned my own money and earned my own money from then on. And it was independent completely from my involvement with men. I had a really wonderful marriage. To, to a great man till he died. Um, I met him, he's a gas station attendant. When I was, uh, when I, at that time, I think I had just newly become a, an insurance underwriter, you know, for an insurance company. And I loved him and he loved me and it was wonderful. And, um, you know, I, I kind of took care of him. Now he got, he earned more money later when I was, when I had kids, you know, he, he shouldered the burden when I had young kids. We, we traded off, you know, yeah. for the rest of our life. And he was younger than me too. Um, so there's, and, and I, there's not a lot of, you know, there's not a lot of um, examples of that. Yeah. <laughs> I just made it up as I went along. I'm 74. So I just kind of made it up as I went along. Yeah. It worked out great. Yeah. And you, Kimi, you have a totally different money story. Oh yeah. It's uh, coming from a different culture. And so uh, when you ta- told me about, you know, separate from the way you feel about yourself, self, self-worth to net worth, right? Yeah. And uh, I thought of this right now, Writers Guild, and then also actors are also protesting, right? Yeah. Um, now, one of the actresses says that, you know, all the CEOs, they need to give up their salary and, uh, you know, give it to you know, just to share, share your wealth to the actresses and the writers. That will solve the problem. And when I, when you told me about separating, I, I thought of this, these, you know, narcissistic CEOs, they should actually connect the dots between self-worth and <laughs> net worth where you're not that worth, you know? So I'm coming from the self-worth We, you know, it's an Asian culture, especially female. I, I can't say... You know, I can't stereotype all the Asian people because Asia is a very complicated and plus uh, very diverse in culture and religions. But I think my generation, you know, women were taught just like Mary, like, you know, men are the breadwinner mm-hmm. and then women are supposed to be staying home. And so that, but of course I had, my mother was very independent. She earned her own money and stuff. So I am watching her. So I never wanted to be that way now. So, but still have that sort of culture that I grew up in where I don't worth that much of money. So maybe I have an opportunity to earn millions of dollars, for example, but how do I even take this opportunity? I don't worth it. You see, Mm -hmm. I'm not worthy of it. So that's, Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. a struggle I have. Mm -hmm. So even let's say, some people say you are so capable of being successful. And if success comes with money. And I'm like, yeah, right. That's, that's someone else's problem. If I earn just enough money to get by, I call it a success. But some people say, no, 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 no. You are more than capable of that. You know, you can be, but, the, but I can't take it because it's just too much for me. I, I was never taught that way. So in that sense, the concept of money is very different. Now I am American citizen. I've lived in this country for more than half of my life. And I understand, you know, how important it is to have assets, <laughs> you know, but yeah. To a point, to a point, I'm just warning you to a point. Mm. What do you mean uh, by you that, get, Terry? Well, I've seen people crash and burn from uh, getting their life out of balance and work owns them. I've seen yes. that. Right, right, Ex- exactly. And I think that that is where, you know, I, I, I'm constantly talking about the pause 
like where where can you pause and redirect yourself like almost like give yourself a slap in the side of the head like what like what what wait a minute what just what just happened or what where did that thought come from or how come I'm how come I'm doing this <coughs> excuse me There's uh, there's one of the worksheets that I that I have that I, I I have three questions on it. What I wanted. So what what's the life I want? What what is it? What is it that I want? With clarity, all that encompasses all aspects of that life that you want, right? It's not just oh I want to be of. Uh, um, six, uh, Mary Foster's here. I'll say this. I want to be a successful real estate developer, for instance. Um, but it's, it's more than that because, and this is, this is where a lot of times we give up in, in, in defining any of this stuff because it, 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 ta- it takes, it takes time, right? It takes, it takes a lot. It's almost like vomiting. It takes, it takes a lot to come up with this stuff because it, it has to do that. That has to do with all who, like, who is that successful real estate developer? Like who, who is she? If you were looking at her, just des- describe her, everything about her, everything lifestyle, how she takes care of herself, what, what she does. Does she have a morning routine? Does she have a night routine? Like, how does she take care of her skin? Gosh, she's got great skin for a real estate developer. You know, what, whatever it is, describe the, the whole picture. Mary? Yes. I, I, would, I would add, include, when you're describing that person, include their family life. Oh, that's a great one. Thanks because, for that, Terry. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. <coughs> um, Excuse me. What I, I it, it just if I can digress for just a minute, yeah, I, I'm not really sure. it's connected. Um, good friend of mine worked with her for a long time. We did the same kind of job. Visited me. We went for a walk on the beach, and I have a small house, and I had uh, one of my daughters and her kids and her guy, you know, stuffed into it <laughs> with me. Uh, until they went out on their own and everything. And, and I was kind of apologizing for my small house. And she said, don't, she said, don't do what I did. I bought a house that was too big. And my, my, my kids and my husband, we all had our own special areas in the house. We grew apart and our family fell apart. It's it. I was too involved in my work and the big house and it, it, it did not serve us in the end. And I'm just saying that as an example, but you know, others, others, people I've known work too many hours and their family becomes a stranger to them. You become a, they, they became a stranger to their family. That's, that's, a, great that's, notice. What I'm that's a great notice. That's a great notice. Good for her. And that's great that she shared that with you so that you could share it with us. That's really super. As I, as I sit here in California and I'm staring across here with this giant screen TV um, that nobody watches because everybody's in their own rooms. And um, I find it kind of, kind of sad and, and, and dreary. So yes, add what that family lifestyle is to you, like include it all. So, and, 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 and this isn't like a one and done thing either, you know, keep coming back to it as you go through your, through your day or through the month or through the year or whatever and go, Oh, I, that also, that's also part of what what I what I wanted. And when you so so the, but then you also have to look at the next thing is you also have to look at those things that you know stop you or why I gave up getting to this why i gave up and you may not <coughs> excuse me be able to answer that right from the get go because it's it, it's not going to come easy to you it didn't come easy to me let me say that of what why i gave up or what was it 
that made me look the other way? What was it that I got distracted on? What was it that pulled me away from this what I what I what I wanted, what I wanted to step into? What was it that pulled me away? And this but you got to describe that again. You've got to describe that again. And again, it's not one and done. It's not like you answer it and it's like, oh, okay, I, I wrote it down. Because there's lots of stuff that's layered underneath that. But then the next question is, what could I have done? If I saw this and my experience was this, what could I have done to make this more fluid? What could I have done to get to that path of what I of what I wanted? Because we all have in us the resolve to get to where we ultimately want to be. But there's a lot of distractions along the way. We see 5,000 ads a day. 5,000 ads a day on a regular basis between billboards, radio, ad, TV advertising, magazines, social media. 5,000 ads a day. We're distracted. Know that that's going to happen. Know that that's going to happen. Since COVID, Americans... I don't know if this is happening worldwide, but I'm assuming so. But Americans are spending more money than they ever have. Because that was what fueled us, what, what kept our, our feeling of worthiness alive was buying something to fill the void of no connection. Yes. And now we're hooked on it, just like the living room with a TV that nobody watches. Because everybody now has a TV and a smartphone. We don't need that central gathering space anymore. But we're humans. We need human contact. So true. Right? The average yes. credit card debt in America is over $15,000. That's a lot of interest. So where, so in my self-worth story, nowhere in there is me funding somebody else's lifestyle through interest payments. Yes, ma'am. I have no debt at all. And I feel the same way. Right? So watch what your actions are around what that net worth is. You know, <laughs> this week I was... Um, I met with some um, some girlfriends, and one of them um, had on a Gucci, uh, like, like kind of like a romper suit. It wasn't sweatpants, but they were kind of fancy. They weren't dress pants. They were like lounge loungewear stuff. <clears throat> and she had told me that it was Gucci. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known. Um, and she said to me, <laughs> I just, I just thought that this was comical. I, I was telling the story last night to, to, um, to my sister. I just thought this was, I come, I come out of the, of the bedroom and I'm, we're at the beach. And so I'm have my, my, you know, jeans on and a, and a jean shirt. I had a white jeans and a jean shirt on. And she said, oh, my God, Mary, you always look put together. And I, I chuckled to myself, you know, after I said, oh, thank you. 
I chuckled to myself because my white jeans came from Poshmark. If you're not a Poshmarker, get on Poshmark. My white jeans came from Poshmark. Uh, I think I paid $19 for them. Uh, my jean shirt was from eBay. Uh, I paid $5 for a Gap jean shirt on eBay. And um, I had on a pair of sneakers that I bought in Poland that are a knockoff of Converse that in Poland I paid $19 for. Always look so put together. And, you know, I again, who are you? Like, what is your style? Stick to who, what your style is, not what the ads are dictating us to be. Like, right. where's that self-worth? Okay, bye, Terry, thanks. Where's that self-worth of yours and not your net worth? Like these women that would come into Bloomingdale's and tell me that they needed to have these $1,200 pair of Gucci sunglasses because they were going to be the next Angelina Jolie. Like they weren't. It wasn't going to happen. They weren't going to be in the movies. They weren't going to marry Brad Pitt. I had to be the one to tell them that. Like Brad Pitt was not going to come knocking on the door because they had the sunglasses on. Barry Tesler from the one of my favorite books about money is called The Art of Money. And it's Barry Tesler. She has a great website, uh, B-A-R-I-T-E-S-S-L-E-R. <clears throat> I, I think she lives in, in um, New York, actually, um, Yukini. But, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I first heard about Barry in 2014 in a magazine, in a magazine called Mindful, one of my favorite magazines. And the article was her describing her as a financial um, coach, telling people to do a roadmap. And I've talked about this roadmap before, but I thought that I would share it with you. And I was, I was going to create a worksheet and I still will. And once I create the worksheet, then I'll make sure to send it to y'all. But she says, in order to separate your self-worth from your net worth, put write down, and this isn't something that you're going to do in one sitting. Matter of fact, you shouldn't do it in one sitting. Is, and on separate pieces of paper, your first description or your first story is your <clears throat> basic lifestyle. What do you need to get by? What does your life look like on a daily basis that has a roof over your head, food on the table, gas in the tank? What does that look like? What are the needs for some people, even at the basic level, it is, I have to have a Starbucks every day. If that's you, don't shame yourself about it. Be like, I, I that's, that's my basic. My basic is I have to go to Starbucks every day because I don't want to make my own coffee or that's my uh, um, social outlet. Don't, you know, this is the, like, no, no shaming here. Like, what, what do you want out of your daily? Day? Do you want to be able to, is, is your basic level, I have to buy organic food. I have to shop at Trader Joe's. Like, what, write your basic, not what somebody else is telling you basic should be. What's your basic, your basic needs? Once you fully describe this, and I had I wrote, I had written like pages. Once you oh, hang on, I got to plug in. Otherwise, I'm going to lose you. Um, then the next step, once you have that down, is to put dollar signs to it. 
what does that, what does everything about what you wrote above, what does everything cost? True, truly. What does everything cost? Once you've got that one done, then take a look at what your life would look like if you up-leveled. What is it that you'd like to add into your life? Would you like to add in a monthly massage, a monthly manicure or pedicure? Um, Would you like to add in a vacation? Maybe the vacation is in your basic, but if it was, if a vacation was in your basic, then maybe this is, you want to take a month long sabbatical. Like what, what would that up level be? You want a new couch, you want a new apartment. Like what would the up level be to your basic ordinary, ordinary lifestyle? And Like, how does that fill you? How does that fill your soul up? How does that, how does that make you feel about yourself? <clears throat> when you've got the, without, and, and, and this isn't about working harder. This, uh, you know, like, this isn't about uh, all thinking, oh, I got to, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I got to, that doesn't serve any purpose here. This is just about what's the up level life. After that's done, again, price it out. What's the add on to each one of those elements? So if I'm going to add on a monthly massage, that's going to cost me $100 plus maybe a $20 tip. I'm going to put in $120. I need $120 more. Or I, you know, uh, I want to be able to go out to eat once a week. What's that really going to cost me? Maybe going out to eat is I'm going to go down the street and grab a hot dog off the street just again so that I can fill myself up with conversation. Or maybe that means you want to go to a, a, a Michelin star restaurant. Like what, what it is, what, whatever the up level is for you. It, 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 that doesn't, what somebody else is doing serves no purpose there. <clears throat> what each one of those items, cost. Next is your first class lifestyle. What does it look like to have everything that you imagine that you would want? The big house on the hill, uh, a a Land Rover, a a uh, trip around the world like what does that life look like to you again not comparing yourself to somebody else's lifestyle <coughs> excuse me because there's a lot of that out there Excuse me. Now, fund it. What uh, what's the dollars behind that luxury first class lifestyle? Every item. And calculate each one of those, work that out as to what that is on a monthly basis, the upgrade from your basic to your up level to your first class lifestyle. The interesting thing was that when I did this, as Barry talks about, that we we 
This is why separating your self-worth from your net worth is so, so important. Is that the difference between my basic and my up-level lifestyle was minuscule. I just was not focused on funding it because I was distracted by bright, shiny objects. And then when I looked at my up-level life to my first-class life, the same thing happened. It was minuscule. Because what makes me happy, my self-worth, what makes me happy really had nothing to do with my net worth. And it was a really interesting exercise that I then had my husband do it separately to see what if we were at all parallel, if there were any without, <coughs> excuse me, without him seeing mine, you know, like what, what does he, what, what does he want out of his life? And it ended up that we were very, very similar. But we could see it it was clear as day where we were sabotaging ourselves for somebody else's view of what our life was going to look like or be like. It was unconsciously keeping up with the Joneses. So you, by doing this roadmap that, as as Barry Tesler describes it, it's you get to see where am I now? Where am I right now? Where's my basic? Here I am in my basic. (coughs) Or maybe you already are up-leveling your life. But if you are, then go back and talk about what your basic is. Like wherever you are on this picture, on the spectrum, to make sure that you are not tying your self-worth to your net worth. So where where am I right now? What's one thing that I can do to get me to the to the up level, what's the one thing that I can do? How can I refocus my energy? How can I reach out to a past client that I haven't seen in a while? That maybe who do I always I always say, who do you know who? For instance, and you, you can be who do you know who needs a piano teacher? Who do you know who needs uh, is looking for a new home or wants to buy or sell a new home? Who do you know who? What's one thing that you can do? Change a spending habit. Let go of let go of something. How will I know when I have up leveled? Because if we don't pause and notice and celebrate it just becomes another day we never get to up level our self worth so how will i know when i have taken gotten to that next step and who am i in the picture, because each step, each time you step up, you actually have done something different. You have become someone different. There's something different about you that is allowing you to stay focused on up-leveling your life or 
in this instance, this discussion, your self-worth, helping you to define your money statement, your wealth statement. And those wealth statements are based around our values. What is it that you value about your life now? What do you believe? Is there a belief around how your values will change when you up-level your life? What different words can you use to describe yourself as you up-level? Are you more focused? Maybe you're more passionate. I know that what's happening with me is that I'm releasing so much of the stuff that I didn't want to do in my business that I feel like I'm about to explode. I think that's what's happening with you, Yukimi. I'm, I've always loved what I do, but now I'm, I'm just this, it, I feel like this path is just being laid out in front of me that I'm not questioning, not questioning. I'm just walking. I'm just, I'm just doing it every day. So this, while Barry Tesler describes money mapping is taking a look at a lot of times we look at our net worth as a feeling of security and that in actuality, that feeling of security can only come from our self-worth. And if we stay focused on our self-worth rather than our net worth, then we can also let go of the thoughts of how is this going to look to other people? Is my, does my net worth help me to compensate for some other lacks in my life? And if so, where do I believe those lacks are? And ask yourself where that story is coming from. Because again, if we don't take a look at the abundance that we already have by our basic lifestyle, right now, my basic lifestyle, if we don't take a look and celebrate that as women, like I created that. I'm, I am that. And this, once you do this, this money map and see the small little tweaks that only the small little tweaks that you have to make in order to up level your life, it's, it's, um, it's freeing. Like it's, you, you get excited about staying focused on what it is that you say that you want, like implementing a budget instead of flying by the seat of your pants. You are worthy of having a monthly budget. Uh, Dave Ramsey, the financial guru, has a has a uh, a wallet, if you will, where where he says to when you get your paycheck or retirement or whatever it is where your money is coming in from from clients from your business, 
<clears throat> take out the cash to pay your regular bills and put them in envelopes. And so that you're never going dipping into, you're not using your debit card. Oh, I'm just, yeah, sure. I'll just whip out my debit card. I'll just, you know, just like there's an endless pocket of money there, which is self-sabotaging. But if you stay true to what your lifestyle is and that you are continually paying yourself first by putting no matter what amount it is, $2, $1, $5, $50, it doesn't matter. It, it is the process of you telling your mind, showing your mind that you are worthy of creating abundance by having your savings account, your emergency fund. One of the things that I've recently done um, because of Dave Ramsey um, is open up Acorns account where Acorns is linked to my bank account. And every time I buy something with my debit card, it up levels it, the purchase, and that money goes into an investment, an investment account. If it's one cent, 20 cents, 57 cents, it doesn't matter. It just goes in there. I don't even know that it's, I don't even know that it's gone. By the end of by the by the end of the first month, I had fifty dollars in there, and I thought, "Shit, I spent that much! Like I spent enough for that to happen." I was like, "Damn it!" And I made me review actually my purchases for the month to see where I self sabotaged myself and got and got derailed. So, what is it that you you can do to help define? your wealth statement, making sure that your wealth statement is not tied to your net worth, but that is certainly part of it, right? Because if you're being true to who you are, if you're being true to, in Yukimi's case, being a a piano teacher and having her brilliant podcast, and then Allow allowing sponsors to become part of this journey because of her brilliant podcast and what she does. Once she allows that to happen, because it's a process, we can't, we're, we, we, It doesn't, it doesn't just happen. There's a lot of layers that we need to release of ourselves in order to create these wealth statements, in order to create these statements about ourselves that will help to guide us and keep us on the path to building net worth. There's a lot of emotional garbage that we've been fed all along, and each one of us is different. Even though we're all women, each one of our stories is different. So in defining your wealth statement, how can you believe how can you step into that image of what that first class life looks like? and feels like, and is like, because that person that is living your description of that first class or luxury lifestyle is doing something different. She had to become more brave in some area of her life, or more confident. What area of her life, meaning you in the first class version, what area of your life are you more focused, more 
you have more belief around you are you are different so you might add that third component to Barry Tesler's map of describing what that lifestyle is, the basic comfortable lifestyle, the up-level lifestyle, the first class or luxury lifestyle, then the costs associated with each one of those. And then the third component might be that belief story around who that person is and what she is doing differently. How did she actually do that? Because you had to do something different in order to get to the next level. What did you do different? What did you do different? So in Yukimi's case, for instance, it may be that her up level is she wants to bring in, or to get to her next level, she needs to bring in an extra $1,000 a month. And if you take a look at what that $1,000 is, is a thousand dollars a month is I've got to do ten extra piano lessons, or I have to find one sponsor, or I have to create an online class that I need twenty people to attend. And when you begin to, what happens when you begin to break it down like that is that you look at that, it's sometimes it's almost laughable because you look at it and go, oh my gosh, like that's doable. But I got to tell people, I got to actually. What do I have to do in order to tell people, right? When you look at it, it's and breaking it down as to what's in what what's in my control. What do I have to do differently in order to in order to up level? It's pretty freeing because then all you have to do is do that. You don't have to think about it. Right. You do. Well, I don't want any thinking because once we start thinking, once we go into our thinking head, that's when we go into our stopping head because that's when the negative thoughts come in. Right. We want to stay in the in the action to get to the momentum part of things. So in. In in doing this stepping stone process, it will help you to define each step of the way your wealth statement. Because if you just define a wealth statement that you don't believe, you're not going to get there. But if you take a look at what your wealth statement means right now, that I have everything I need, that I'm creating abundance because I am creating everything that I need. I have everything that I need. I have a roof over my head, food on the table. The lights are still on. And that next step is, what is my wealth statement there? These don't have to be, (coughs) excuse me, these don't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be some grandiose statement. It only has to mean something to you. I'll leave you with this. One of my favorite quotes is by Coco Chanel. 
which I thought that this for me, because I have on the last vision board that I made, I had this beautiful picture of palm trees, my favorite tree, uh, palm trees blowing in the wind with a table uh, that was beautifully, beautifully casually set on the beach. And underneath that, I had cut out a word out of a magazine that said luxury lifestyle. And that word luxury <clears throat> has always kind of sent a chill down my spine, not in a positive way. I worked in luxury retail all my life. And a lot of the people that I dealt with were just not pleasant. So it had this, I had this love hate relationship with the word luxury until I read this quote, luxury is the freedom to refuse to live by habit. Is that awesome? Luxury is the freedom to refuse to live by habit. What habits are stopping you? 70% of our day is run by habitual uh, things that we do. What is it that you're doing every day that is keeping you from living a luxurious lifestyle? And how can you pause and notice it and be conscious about the decisions and the choices that you're making every day and every moment? Was this helpful? Yeah. I think our money stories are so important, um, not only to our everyday life, but in, in order to build our businesses. That these belief statements that we have around self-worth and net worth, um, we see other people in social media. We um think that all of a sudden they flipped a switch and and they you know they're oh, 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 they're so successful when we don't get to see the journey we don't get to see the backstory we don't get to see the failures the struggles the obstacles and we allow that to chip away at our self-worth because our self-worth is so tied to our net worth if you break those apart and you stay focused on your self-worth, your net worth will follow and not the other way around. So try this, try this Barry Tesla roadmap. It was eye-opening for me. It allowed me to create a life and a business that I, that's able to fund the life that I just, that I want and still being true to myself. Like I don't, I, 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 I didn't have to become a, 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 a liar, a cheat or a thief. Like all I had to do was show up as me. And, and, and I still get to evolve because once I get to one of these levels, then I can see that, oh, wow. And now if I let go of this stuff, I can even find more joy in what I do. and serve more people and create more abundance in all areas. But I had to, I had to break that looking at what other people had or what other people were doing or what other people. And I had to stay focused on what, spoke to my soul, my spirit, and defined that for me and not for not for someone else.
the other thing that that Barry Tesla said, which is why I talk about this self worth and net worth so much, is that um, she says that money management is one of the highest forms of self care. And I never, okay, you came me thanks. I never considered money management a form of self care. Self-care to me was my Sunday. I'm going to take a bath. I'm going to give myself a pedicure, give myself a facial. That was my self-care. I never looked at it as managing my money as one of the best forms of self-care that I can do. I always felt like that was kind of greedy or dirty or something. So look at these money stories. Create these three images of your life, these three levels of your life. Take a look at what it means for you, not for any, not like not for anybody else. This isn't the legacy that I'm going to leave my kids. This isn't you know, what's my daughter going to think? What's my, you know, this is the money that the, the levels that you have for your life. And it will help you define where your non-negotiables are. It will help you to Create and define your wealth statements as you go and grow. So that you can refuse to live by habit. And you can create new healthy boundaries to... Find to get to that space between who you are and who you want to be. Where are the non-negotiables? And by doing the work of defining where you are, what your next move is, where you ultimately want to be, by defining those, it will help you to become the manager of your talent and your time in creating